Well, hello. Uh, we're going to start working on our CO2 car today, and so you'll probably want to come to the checkout station right away. Your blue sheet for R&D by this time, because uh, to make the CO2 car, we're going to have to do our technical drawing on the back. Um, so if you haven't gotten that blue sheet yet, make sure you've gotten it. All right, let's start doing these thumbnail sketches. Um, I'm going to try a bunch of different designs. Uh, first one I'll try, I think I'll, I'll make it kind of angled, straight lines. I could put, uh, label it side view. Uh, the top view, I'll make the top view straight lines also. And uh, not a lot of detail here. Um, we're not, I can write top on it if I want to keep track of which one's which. The, the side view and the top view don't necessarily have to match each other. Um, I, can, I can do another one like this. Same sort of shape for the side view. And then uh, I can make it a little shorter for the top view. See, they don't, they don't necessarily have, have to match from side to top. A little bit more, oh, a little bit more aerodynamic rather than, rather than having straight corners and flat, flat faces and so forth. Maybe I'll make it more aerodynamic, kind of like this. round the back corners. That's my top view. Uh, maybe, you know, sometimes when you make the front end a little bit wider, the car is more stable. So uh, let's try an another set. Let's go, let's try a little bit more of a taper on this set. There's my side view and my top view. Make it wider there have the wheels go through there. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I want to try something different. Let's, uh, let's make a wedge. You know, I've seen some kids like to make a wedge, a flying wedge. Cuts through the air like a knife. There's our uh, side view. And then uh, there's our, our top view. They look almost the same. That one's a right triangle. This one's an, uh, what you call an isosceles triangle top view. Um, let's see, some kids, I know some kids like to, some kids like to make not a wedge, but a cone, a flying cone. And you know, the funny thing about, about a car that's a cone is that if you do your um, thumbnails for a car that's a cone, they're actually going to look exactly the same as a car that's the wedge. This could be a cone, this could be a wedge, and, and the drawing, the thumbnail sketches look the same. Um, oh, some kids like to do uh, a wheel in the middle, so let's do something here. Notice my, I kind of like to make this curved right here, let the wind kind of slip over it. Um, there's my side view. As I said, some kids like to, like to do a wheel in the middle, so they design a fork into the front end. Like that, and their wheel goes right in the middle. Some kids do that. And then, of course, two wheels back here. If you want, you can, uh, you can draw your wheels. Just sketch your wheels in here to see where your wheels are going to go on these cars. Um, wheels, if your front end is really skinny, you don't want to put your wheels too close to the front because the axles will break right out of the wood. Um, if your car is a little bit wider down here on the left, um, you want to put your wheels at the widest point right there and back here. I wouldn't put my wheels too close to the back of the car because it's going to interfere with your, your startup gate. Um, but anyway, I would fill a whole sheet with different ideas of technical or of, of uh, thumbnail sketches. Uh, if you want, flip it over and, and do some more on the back. This is a really good idea to get a rough idea of what the size and shape of your car should look like, the overall design. Now I've been looking over my thumbnail sketches and I kind of like Oh, I kind of like this sort of a car right here. 
I like, I like this um, top view. I forgot to put a T there. Uh, I like this top view. And I kind of like um, this side view, these two. As I said before, the top view and the side view do not necessarily have to match each other. Um, you know, they, um, when you look at the top of a car, say you're out the fourth story window of a building and you look at the top of a car, and then you go down onto the sidewalk and you look at the side of the car, those two views do not necessarily look uh, very much the same. So they don't really have to match. Lines like that, get some 3D on that car. Um, maybe this is car number six inside a circle. Um, might have some flames shooting off the back or some flames, you know, flame painting or something. Uh, you know, design in some ideas here. Um, of course, they, they race next to each other, so uh, let's put our car, the one I'm going to design, which I, as I said, is going to be a little bit more aerodynamic, a little more curved in design. You want to make your tires look 3D, draw a line over like that, maybe put some kind of uh, cross-hatching lines on there, make the tires look like they're 3D. Um, front tires, of course, are smaller. And make the front end like that. And of course, again, if you just run a parallel line right up the car, see how I've done one line like that, and then another line right next to it like that, and then we'll put the grill of the car right in the front. Um, this one, oh, what kind of design are we going to do here for our paint? Uh, maybe we'll do an, an angular design. Something like that. You know, paint it dark in the middle and light on the ends or some, some kind of idea. Um, and then, of course, uh, oh, there's a fence back here that's protecting the, the, all the spectators from the, uh, from the dragsters. And uh, of course on these fences they this, always this have thing goes, uh, the lights go bing, 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 bing. And then when the last light lights, they take off. Um, maybe uh, kind of a hint of a roadway here. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe they've already started. We can, we can have some smoke coming off these tires. Let's do our technical drawing now. You should have a blue sheet like this with a grid work on it with a rough outline of the car uh, for the side view and the top view. And down here, of course, your name. Um, let's uh, put a name on here, John Smith. Okay, period four. Okay, so if this gets lost somewhere, you know uh, that someone will, will turn it into the teacher and you won't have a bunch of work down the tubes. Um, now we're going to take our block of wood and uh, we're going to make sure that it fits that drawing. Uh, sometimes a batch of uh, CO2 cars get cut out and they don't match the drawing as well as you think they should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against the back line here and against this line down here and then I'm going to take a look right here and take a look at where the hole for the CO2 cartridge comes it's a little bit low with the dotted lines here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this CO2 car block up with the top the top edge, the top edge right there. And then I'm going to draw a new line, a new bottom. There we go, and it's, it's up about an eighth of an inch from where it was before. Of course, we're doing this car in metric. Let's say it's up about three millimeters from where it was before. And three millimeters was about what we needed. Yeah, right there, it's about 
three millimeters, there's the dotted line, three millimeters up, that, that hole's going to line up just right with the dotted line. Okay, if you don't understand that, ask your teacher uh, what's meant by that, and your teacher will help you uh, line that, that CO2 hole up with the dotted line on your drawing. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we have here. First of all, uh, we have two suggestions for where to put an axle. All right, the axle should be about a half a square above the bottom of the car. So I'm going, I like to keep my axle fairly close to the back, half a square up from the bottom of the car, and kind of close to the front, half a square up from the bottom of the car. And remember, the bottom of the car is this new line we put in there. And um, there's, there's a heavy line here. This line right here is an extra heavy line. Your car um, must be at least this long, or you can make it the total length. But your car, here it says, minimum car length, 200 millimeters. And notice, notice, 200 millimeters falls 20 centimeters, is the same thing as 200 millimeters. That falls right on that heavy line. Your car must be at least that long. And it indicates right here. Okay, I, I am going to make my car, um, oh, a little bit longer than the minimum, a couple squares longer than the minimum, but I'm not going to take it all the way out to the very end, because if you make the car a little bit shorter, it'll keep a little bit lighter. Now, um, when you draw back here, you must stay half a square away from that dotted line, otherwise your car will be unsafe. So I'm, I'm going to make this car curved. So I'm going to draw a curved body, and then I'm going to make it small uh, down here, and then I'm going to have a little bit of a hump for the, for the tire. All curved. There we go. That looks nice and curved. And then I'm going to bring it down to a fairly sharp point. There we go. There's my car design. Of course, the bottom line that I scribed there with my pencil will be the bottom of the car. Uh, we, can, we can take out a little bit of weight here. Let's make this curved. Take out some weight back there. There we go. That's my side view. Now, my top view, there's a little bit of a trick to making the top view. Notice there is a center line going down the top view. A center line is always made with a long dash, short dash, long dash, short, long, short. And that's the center line. That's the center of the car. I'm going to take my drawing and I'm going to fold that, fold that drawing right on the center line of that top view. There we are. I have half of a top view. And um, I'm going to make my top view kind of curvy like my bottom view. You know, if you're making your car sharp and angular, uh, you might want to make your top view sharp and angular if you're making your, your side view sharp and angular. Back here, notice the dotted line right here. This dotted line is where the CO2 cartridge is going to be. We want to stay at least a half a square away from that dotted line. Now, in the middle of the car, I want to kind of make the car lightweight in the middle. And then up here where I'm going to have the axle, I want to have the car kind of wide. So um, again, curvy, I'm going to go curvy, staying half a square away from that dotted line. Nowhere did I come any closer than half a square from that dotted line. Curvy looking back end. And then I'm going to go narrow in the center here. I wouldn't go any less than, than a half a square right there. If you go less than a half a square, you're going to find that your car is going to be pretty weak. Okay, curvy. And curvy. I think, I think, okay, I ended there. Right there, I ended on that line, so I'm going to go up, 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 up. That's where I'm going to end the front of my car right here. And I'm going to make this not totally pointed. I'm going to make it kind of spoon-shaped right there. 
Uh, if you make it totally pointed here and totally pointed here, you'll have this really sharp little point and it'll just break off during the first race. So I'm gonna make it a little curvy up there like a spoon. All right, there is my finished technical drawing. When, when your drawing is at this stage, go show it to your teacher and have your teacher initial this drawing on your uh, blue sheet and uh, your teacher may have some suggestions for changing your drawing. Some kids don't quite get the idea and their drawing uh, isn't going to uh, produce a very good color. So a few suggestions from your teacher might be a good idea. Um, I can see a suggestion right here right now. My axle right there is right on the curve. I think I'd better move that curve a little bit forward so I have my axle in a nice wide flat place. So I'm gonna so this is the type of thing that your teacher is probably going to tell you. Just a little bit of a hint here and there how to make your car a little bit better. So if I would have looked at a student design, I would have said, well, you better move that curve up a little bit so your axle is at a little bit wider place. Or another thing you could do is you can move your axle back one slot. You know, if you say, well, I kind of like my axle back a slot. And put my axle there so my axle ends up there. Maybe a combination of the two. But um, anyway, there's our, our finished drawing. Got a pair of scissors and we're going to cut this car out. I made sure to use kind of heavy lines when I drew my car so I could tell exactly which lines were were lines of my car and which lines were of the uh, uh, sheet of blue paper. So we're gonna cut this design out. You know you might want to save these pieces these pieces that you're cutting out because if something happens and you have to redo this drawing, uh, you might be able to trace these pieces to duplicate your drawing. So don't, don't throw out these scraps until you're all done with the module. And we're gonna cut the back of the car off right there at that heavy line. There's our side view. And now, remember I told you to Fold your car, fold your drawing in half lengthwise on the center line like that because we're going to cut this like you cut out a valentine heart. I'm sure a lot of you remember when you were in grade school and you made little valentines for your friends and you cut out that little heart shape, you folded your paper in half and you drew half of a heart and then you cut that heart out and then you unfolded your paper and the neat thing about doing that is that after you cut that valentine heart out and you unfolded the paper you had a perfectly shaped heart. Of course you wouldn't be able to do that if you had just the regular flat paper. You have to fold the paper to get that neat shape. And so that's what I've done here. I've folded my paper in half cut that back end of the car off. I folded my paper in half, cut it out like a valentine, and look at that. We have a perfect shaped symmetrical. This is called bilaterally symmetrical, just like the human body. You know, the human body is bilaterally symmetrical. You got a right arm, you got a left arm. You got a right leg, you got a left leg. You got a right eye, you got a left eye, and everything on one side matches the other side. So here's our car where everything on one side matches the other side. Now, um, as I said, save these in case you have to duplicate them later. You can always trace them to duplicate them. Um, some people have trouble figuring out which is the top and which is the bottom. Here's a quick little hint. Just take your ruler, right, right like that, put your ruler against the floor and bump it into the back of the car. 
See how they match up nicely? If, you're, if your wood's upside down, whoa, they don't match up quite right, do they? So you can just check that quickly with the ruler to determine which way is the top. And the top is right there. Take your cutout patterns and trace them onto your wood block with a pencil, like these students have done here. Save the paper cutouts in case something happens to your wood block and you need to trace them again. Be sure to trace the side view and the top view. Notice that you will only trace the side view. We'll do the top view later. And the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the drill press and we're going to drill our axle holes in this block of wood. Very important to drill the axle holes before going to the bandsaw. So let's go to the drill press. Now it's important that you drill the axle holes before you saw out your shape. And you have to make sure you have the correct size drill bit. You want the 3 sixteenths of an inch drill bit, which is usually the second smallest drill bit. It's not the absolute smallest one, that's the eighth inch. You want the three sixteenths. Your um, CO2 car axle holes. Um, take your wood, and uh, if you remember when we uh, when we did the video on shop safety, if we're going to drill a larger piece, we're going to have this wood against the left side of the vertical shaft to keep it from spinning. Now I'm going to line that up with my uh, dot that I put there for my axle hole and flip up the switch to turn it on and then we're just going to go right down right through that dot that we drew for our axle. If you want you can come up down and up, down and up to clean out the chips. There we go, we're all through. Alright, now again, put it against the left side of the vertical shaft to keep your piece from catching and spinning. And again, find that hole. And if you go down and up, it'll, it'll clean out the hole as you're drilling it. There we go. Now that we're done drilling here, you'll want to go and get a, um, a whisk broom so you can so you can brush all this uh, sawdust off onto the floor. Uh, that way later uh, when we come around with the floor brooms we can it all up. So brush all your chips off onto the floor. Let's go over to the bandsaw. And um, notice that uh, the blade guide is, is too low can't get my car underneath here. Uh, apparently this was set for cutting something thin like a piece of plastic. So I've got to loosen this triangular knob here, right here, and then raise the blade guide so the car will just pass under it. I've got about three or four millimeters of clearance there. And then I'm going to tighten that up so the blade guide doesn't move up and down. Now the really important thing about having that blade guide set at the right height is so you don't run a finger into the blade. That's what this guard right here does. It keeps you from running your finger into the blade. So we'll turn on the saw and we'll start cutting. All right, let's make sure and put these muffs on first to protect our hearing. And uh, first of all, uh, down here you'll see the switch for turning on the bandsaw. Um, up and out for on, and down and in for off. So we'll flip it up and out. Notice I have my car sitting on its side. There's our side view. Side view now sitting on top. Top view is down on the side. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to start cutting from the back end here. One thing that's kind of frustrating about a bandsaw is that it kind of likes to wander a lot. And also, I use this out here to steer this car as I'm cutting it. At any rate, bandsaws kind of like... It's important to know that with bandsaws, the blades can mostly cut straight lines and gentle, slow-moving turns. Don't ever move or turn the blade suddenly or turn your wood around suddenly 
Don't make any sudden moves or quick jerky motions. Try to cut a smooth, sweeping, straight line or straightish line. You can do curves as long as you move very, very slowly. Don't ever try to carve out a triangular shape or a V shape. Don't ever try to make a turn like that because the bandsaw blade will not be able to handle it and it may break and have to be repaired. Now this is a pretty easy design to cut out. Notice I changed my hand from the back, from the front to the back, because when I start getting close to my front fingers, my back hand is going to start pulling the car through. Now I'm getting kind of close to my fingers here. I don't want my fingers where that blade pops out. So I've just changed from pushing the car through to pulling it the rest of the way. There we go. There's our car all cut out now. Some kids like to do some things like zigzags, so I drew some zigzags here. Some, some kids like to do some corners that are a little bit sharper, so I drew a little sharper corner here. The bandsaw doesn't normally handle very well. And then some kids like to do right angles or uh, fairly sharp angles like that. Um, almost, well not quite 90, it's about a 45 degree angle, but a 90 and a 45 are kind of hard to cut. So let's take a look and see how this might be done. Put the muffs on. Turn on the saw. First we'll do our uh, 90 degree and our 45. To do a 90 degree inside uh, cut like this, you'd come in from one direction. Then you'd come in from the other direction. I'd come in at a shallow angle like that. Come in until you can pick up the line and then straighten it out and follow that line into the corner and your piece will drop out, see? Then turn the piece around and go into the other corner. Stop at the corner, back out slowly so you don't pull your bandsaw blade off the wheels. And then come in at that angle. There we go, we got a 45 and we got a 90. Um, let's see another way of doing kind of a sharp. Here we've got, not sharp, but um, a tight curve. This part of the curve isn't too tight, but when we get down into this corner, that's a pretty tight curve. Too tight. Too tight for you to do on the bandsaw without a little bit of tricky maneuvering. Now what I like to do is see how I'm shaving back and forth? Shaving back and forth, and I've opened up a nice wide area. Now my blade can make that corner a lot easier. And then we'll go over into this other corner. Again, that's kind of a tight corner. So what I do is open that corner up a little bit so I can maneuver my blade. Keep my fingers away as I pop out the end. Now I want, I want to take this. Notice Notice how I opened up the cut there and I opened up the cut there so I can maneuver my blade. Zigzags, zigzags are really easy. In on the zig, in on the zag. In on the zig, in on the zag. Uh, one mistake the kids make is they make their zigzags too small. And when 
they make their zigzags too small. Um, after you get done sanding and filing and doing all your other work, the zigzags kind of disappear. But if you make your zigzags a little bit bigger, they won't disappear on you as you're doing your work. And each one of those, now I, I don't want to cut my finger here, so I'm, I'm going to take this hand away and use this hand over here to finish up my cut. That's too close, too close. There we go, zigzags. So those are three typical difficult cuts that kids do that are actually fairly easy to do if you have a technique to do it. And then uh, too low, too low. So we're going to have to bring that up till our piece clears underneath. All right, notice that I went in and I cut that little piece off the back side um, that we forgot about that earlier. Um, got my, uh, my muffs on for hearing protection. And now I'm going to cut out that top view. I got a little bit of a curve back here. bit of a curve back here and I'm follow this drawing slowly keep slowly turning the car keep it lined up on that drawing one of the most frustrating things about band saws is they do tend to wander. So take it slow, take it easy. Cut slowly, turn a little bit more quickly. If you cut quickly and turn slowly, you're going to find your blade wandering all over the place. Keeping my fingers away from the blade at all times. Don't, don't be risky. If your blade is starting to wander, slow down your cutting speed. Take it easy on, on, the, on the speed and go a little bit quicker on the turn. Some people may
make the mistake of trying to go around that corner. You're not going to make it around that corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in from one side. I'm not even going to try even part of that corner. I'm going to cut straight off the end. Notice I didn't reach in to pick out that piece. I shoved it with the car. Came right off the end. Now we're going to do the other side, just like it. Don't even try that corner. It's too sharp. Straight off the end. See? That little thing, and we'll just cut it now. There we go. Don't try to go around a sharp corner like that. You'll never make it around there. And there's our scrap. That's a piece of scrap. There's our car. We've got some, some paper still stuck on there, but that'll come off with the sander. And uh, shut off. Now, one really important thing. We're going to clean up. We've got a lot of scraps here. A lot of garbage. Pick this all up. Stuff fell down behind here. We'll get this stuff back behind here. We'll take this stuff and we'll throw it in the garbage can. And notice we've got a whisk broom. Sweep all this stuff off onto the floor. This is part of your this is part of your project. Clean up is always part of the project. Sweep this all off onto the floor, and you and your partners will come around with the floor brooms, floor brooms later and sweep up and up into the big blue pipes. First, we're going to use the oscillating drum sander. The oscillating drum sander is good for uh, sanding the inside curves on your car. Um, and don't forget, use the, uh, use the muffs on your ears. Uh, the oscillating drum sanders aren't as loud as the other machines, but don't forget, I'm working only two feet away from a screaming bandsaw. So if someone comes up and starts up that bandsaw, here I am right next to it without hearing protection on. So we're going to put that hearing protection on. And then I'm going to reach out in between here where the uh, yellow gate is. I'm going to open up my yellow gate so that I can uh, uh, activate my dust collection system. Again, the switch is just like the bandsaw switches, up and out. And this goes up and down so that we don't wear out one little spot on the sanding drum. It goes up and down. Some people look at it and think, boy, that looks weird. Why does it do that? Anyway, this is good for doing inside curves, and this, this is a smaller one. This is a half inch diameter, so it's good for doing small inside curves. Notice I'm keeping my car flat on the table, and I'm just going to follow that right along. It's kind of a neat machine because two people could work on this at the same time. One person can be over here sanding, and you can be over here sanding until you bump into each other. You might have to get it timed so that you're not going to be bumping into each other. But go ahead and do your inside corners like that. Now, the other two oscillating drum sanders are set up with a larger drum. They're better for doing larger inside curves. And I do have some larger inside curves. I'm going to tilt my car on its side, hold it flat on the table. And I do have some larger inside curves on this surface. You sort of have to experiment with the different drums to see what size drum is going to do the best job on the curves that you want to work on. And if you get good at it, you can also alter your curves a little bit. Like 
look at that. The drawing just came right off. You don't even have to worry about that drawing. Last little thing, part of the job is clean up. That is part of your project. Just sweep all this, all this sawdust off onto the floor so your partners, you and your partners can come around later with the floor brooms. Right off onto the floor. There we go. Wouldn't it be great to clean your own bedroom that way? Mom comes in and says, sweep now your room, sweep all everything down. onto the floor. Uh, you'll probably notice quite readily that there are some little fuzzy edges, kind of undesirable little fuzzies along here. So I went to the checkout station and got a piece of fine sandpaper. And I'm just going to go over the whole car. And I'm going to sand down these edges and as you sand these edges you just use your fingers to do the contouring or the shaping just shape it with your fingers and we can get rid of all those little fuzzies that are undesirable please don't sand out in the regular part of the classroom standing in the shop we've got you know, a lot of things. We don't want to be tracking sawdust into that part of the room. So we're going to do all of our sanding in here. And I'm just kind of rounding things. You can you can do a lot of rounding on your edges if you want. If you want to go if you want to go to the checkout station, get a, a more coarse or a scratchier piece of sandpaper. Uh, you can really round these edges, make your car more aerodynamic if you like, or you can just do it enough to get rid of the fuzzies. And when you get all done, going all the way, all the way around your car, and you think you're, you've gotten rid of enough of the fuzzies, you'll be ready to do your painting. All right, I've just gotten back from the checkout station. I got my paint. I'm going to paint yellow. My first coat is going to be yellow. And um, uh, only half to a third full on one of these little cups is all you need to paint one of these cars. Checked out a brush. And you can also check out a painting stand. <clears throat> these are really pretty slick. Um, this, there are two different styles. and. Uh, the car just fits right on the painting stand like that, and then you can turn your car as you paint it, so you don't have to get your fingers all, all gooked up with paint. Um, you can keep these painting stands overnight, or you know, keep them for a couple of days, like so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a two-tone on this car, and so I'm gonna do this in two different stages. Um, I'd recommend that if you know if you're going to do two colors, I'd recommend that you do your light color first, and then do your darker color later. Darker colors will cover light colors. You know, if you got a little bit going over on one edge or something, a uh, darker color will cover a lighter color more easily than a lighter col color can cover a darker color. So go with your lighter colors first. And as I say, this is going to be a two-tone. My top and my bottom are both going to be yellow. And then my, um, my sides are going to be red. Now, uh, one, little, one little painting technique that I'd recommend that you do is once you get your car covered with the paint, then I take a few long strokes to kind of smooth out the paint so you don't have splotchy looking lines going every different direction. Sometimes you have to go different directions to get the paint on there and to get you know adhering to your surface and then when you get done finish off with some nice long straight strokes. 
It, it takes about half an hour to 45 minutes for this paint to dry. Oops, got a, a hair from my brush, in my paint job. It takes about a half an hour or 45 minutes for this paint to dry. If you try, and, and of course our class period is shorter than 45 minutes. So if you, if you paint two colors the same day, those colors are going to run together and smear where they meet each other. So you're best off to paint one color one day, put your car in your locker to dry overnight, and then paint the next color the next day. I'm going to try something with some masking. So you notice I, I painted some yellow right here, and I painted some yellow. I've already cut out the number one in masking tape, and I put it over that yellow splotch I painted yesterday. Masking tape, it's used to mask off certain areas for painting. So we're going to mask off an area for a little thin racing stripe right down the center of the top of this car. While this uh, stripe, this racing stripe, has had a, a little while to dry, I usually like to take my masking off before the paint is completely dry. If the paint is completely dry and you peel your masking tape off, um, you can actually peel the paint right off along with the masking tape. But if you take it off when it's still just a little bit damp. That edge will be a little sharper. And there's that there's that nice little racing stripe right down right down the top. Boy, does that look sharp. Now we can finish out the sides. When you, when you paint these sides, if you go in the correct direction, notice, notice how I'm stroking toward the yellow. Hold that, let me hold that so you can see it. Notice how I'm stroking toward the yellow. If you stroke toward the yellow like that, um, you'll get a nice sharp edge without going over onto the yellow. See, we got a nice, nice sharp edge on there. there. So we'll finish going around the edges of this car and we'll come back in a few minutes. All right, let's take off this masking tape. There we go. We got a nice looking one for our race car. We've got nice thin red racing stripe down the top. And even our edges around here are nice and sharp because of the direction that I painted. Nice sharp edges there. I'd say it's pretty good looking. Here is the sink in the workshop where you will wash out your paintbrush. Please do a good thorough job of washing out your paintbrush and here's how you can do it. Open the water full blast. 
Hold the brush under the water jet but against the bottom of the sink and gently mash the bristles down into the bottom of the sink. Move it around so all the bristles are exposed to the water and let the jet of water just blast that paint out. Make sure you do this long enough that it's thoroughly washed. Check it by rubbing it against the palm of your hand. If no paint comes out, then you have finished washing it. If any color comes out onto your hand, then you need to start over and wash it some more. Now you can return it to the checkout counter. The teacher assistants will make sure that you have done a good thorough job of washing out your brush. They also will rub it against the palm of their hand. If there's still color on it, you'll have to go back to the sink again. Repeat until the brush is clean. This is so we don't waste brushes, we don't waste resources, we don't waste money having to replace brushes. Thank you. Notice that I've just gotten back from the sink and my paintbrush is all cleaned out, so don't take it back to the checkout station dirty. Make sure that paintbrush is nice and clean. Well, here we are for final assembly of our car, and uh, you should have your little Ziploc bag, and in the Ziploc bag you should have four wheels, two axles, two um, axle, these are kind of like bearings, they're, they're a, a drink straw, but they act like a bearing, so we're going to put those inside, and you should also have two little things called screw eyes and we'll put those on later. So first of all what we need to do is we need to put these straws inside the car. Now if it's if you find it difficult to put those straws in there you may have to go back over to the drill press and just run that drill press through the car again. So we're gonna stick these in. If you want to throw a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue on these on these straws, uh, it probably isn't necessary. I would just slide them through just the way they are and then we're going to cut them off even with the ends right flush with the outer edge of the car. There I just uh, cut those straws off with a um, pair of scissors. They're cut off even. So they're, they're inside there, but they've been cut off flush on the outside. Now we're going to put the axle into one wheel. And so let's take one of the axles. I guess I'll take, the, I, I happen to have a shorter axle and a longer axle here. I guess I'll use the shorter axle for the front. Open up the vise. Put your axle Put your axle in the vise. Either way works. I'll just put it that direction so you can see it a little bit better. And then we'll press that axle right in with the vise. Don't go overboard. Don't go overboard. This, this vise has enough pressure to buckle that axle right in half. Stick it in there. Okay. Uh, looks good. We've, we've got about a centimeter sticking out on the outside edge. And then we'll put the axle in one of the rear wheels. Again, be careful, don't, don't go any further than you need to or you'll buckle your axle right in half. Now here we have One wheel, one axle on the front, one wheel, one axle on the rear. Let's go over to the cutters that are hanging down right over here by this pink bench. And we're going to cut it off so we have about a centimeter. Now look, look how I'm, I'm putting the axle way down at the bottom of the cutters. There's much more leverage down there. And cut. Cut's pretty easy. 
If you try to cut way up near the top, oh, you'll be squeezing like crazy. The front one, I'm going to cut the front one at about, oh, six millimeters. There we go. Now if we can take a quick, close look at that, you can see how much is sticking out on each of those. And let's go back over to the vise. Take our rear wheel. Hold it in place. And we'll just tighten up the vise. Squeeze, squeeze that wheel right on there. Now don't squeeze it until, until they touch. Sometimes you gotta have a little bit of wobble. A little tiny bit of wobble there. Sometimes people squeeze their wheels so tightly that you can't turn them anymore. So you need to have just a little bit of wobble. And we'll do the front. Now I'll show you what happens if you squeeze them too tightly. It doesn't turn. Notice those front wheels don't turn. We squeeze them too tight in the vise. So if you squeeze them too tight in the vise, just pull them apart, twist them apart just a little bit, then they'll turn. Want both your front and back wheels to turn freely. Now we're going to take our hook eyes here. I don't know if you can see those, but they're a little like what you'd use for a door latch. And we're going to take this tool called an awl, and we're going to poke a hole either a little bit in front of the axle or a little bit behind the axle, but don't poke it toward the axle. If you do, when you screw the little hook eye in, it's going to keep your axle from turning. So poke that hole a little bit in front or a little bit behind the axle. Screw it in. Get quite the right bite on that with your fingers. You can stick the awl inside there, the awl to turn that little hook eye. Have it facing crosswise because a string is going to go through this way. This car races down the track and is held in place by a string. Okay, there we have on the underside of the car, we have our two hook eyes in place. Here we are at the checkout station and we're going to get a weight on our car. Um, the weight is probably the single most important factor as to whether or not you're going to win. Um, this is not a checkout item. You must have this weighed at the checkout window. This may not leave the checkout station. If you take this into the shop, you will be in trouble. So it, the weighing gets done here. First thing uh, that has to be done is whoever is doing the weighing has to zero the gauge. There's a little knob here. Move that so you're reading at zero. And then put the car on here. Sideways or upside down works fine. And we have 92 grams. 92 grams. That's a fairly light car. I've seen some weigh in at 50 or 60 grams. Uh, really, really lightweight cars. So, you know, if you really want to win, light is the way to go. Now, I think I mentioned earlier, make sure that you're checked off on your blue sheet for completing your car. Make sure you get off for returning your Ziploc bag. Make sure your drawings are checked off. Make sure to have initials in every one of those boxes on the blue sheet. And you're all done and you're ready to race.